key indicator that that somebody is is considering assaulting you. It yes. could be a key indicator that True. that somebody just needs someone to listen. Yes. Right. Yes. And if you don't slow down, if you don't stay calm, um, then you're going to miss those opportunities to effectively um, help the people out. Exactly. Or I, assess. It's like absolutely. you're assessing while you're listening. Absolutely. And I've, I've been accused of being a fast talker. Really? Um, yes. I, I can talk fairly fast. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'll give an example. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm testifying in court, mm -hmm. ah. I talk fast. Gotcha. Right? Because I'm recalling the situation and I'm, yes. I'm providing um, details, the picture. Mm -hmm. right? I'm painting the picture for people. And I will often have um, the uh, judge mm -hmm. or the court clerk ask me to slow down really because i'm talking at a pace where they can't keep up with the documentation oh my goodness be typed <laughs> so that has something that, that is something that i've had to uh continually work on yes is is slowing down yeah and i find when i have situations where um someone is in some sort of crisis mm -hmm. if i slow down mm -hmm. um, not only the speed um, but my responses, mm -hmm. and um, I lower the tone of my voice. Yes, it will bring people down. It will uh, any level of excitement that they have. Right, it will bring them down. It yeah. will give them pause, and they will become more comfortable. Yes, that's all so true. You should teach a class on listening and talking. There are people out there that are much better at it, <laughs> much more professional at it. Well, than I, I think am. you'd be good. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to move on to number six. Who has been your biggest influence? What lessons did that person or people teach you? Uh, you know, it's hard to pick just one person. Yeah. I have I have so many people that I can point towards. Um, I have um, I have people from the Marine Corps that mm -hmm. were were heavy influences on the things that I did. Um, I have uh, my my dad. Yeah. Uh, my dad was a heavy influence on me. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't know. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic. Oh, gotcha. Um, and the one thing uh, that he did right, despite mm -hmm. um, oftentimes being drunk, mm -hmm. was he was always there for us kids. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. If we wanted to play catch, he'd go out in the yard and play catch. Yeah. Um, and he instilled in me work ethic. Mm -hmm. The man always had a job. He was always working. Yes. Um, and it wasn't the most glamorous jobs. It was yeah. always like getting your hands dirty. Right. Coming home with cuts on your hands and your wow. arms. Um, when I was uh, 12 or 13 years old, he fell 25 feet out of a tree and broke <gasps> his back. Oh, my word. He was word. working for a company that would limb trees on the way up oh. and then would top them all the way down. Oh. And when he was pulling up the saw, it hit the half hitch knot on his belt, oh. which caused him to fall oh. back from the tree. Um, long story short of that is he didn't just give up. Yeah. Right? He had to have uh, a cage put in his back and oh my word. several vertebrae uh, fused together. Yes. He kept trying, and the oh. state was doing different things to rehabilitate him. Yeah. Um, to include... Um, before he passed away, mm -hmm. he was working for the Department of Fish and Wildlife as mm -hmm. a clerk, mm -hmm. right? And the biggest thing that I took away is family is important, and you work hard to take care of your family. Yes. So um, my dad was a fabulous influence in that aspect of life. Exactly, and those are so important too. So um, as far as um, – as far as the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. um, I had a, at the time, he was gunnery sergeant. Mm -hmm. I believe he got out as a master sergeant. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot remember his last name. Mm -hmm. I, I know his first name is Abram. Mm -hmm. uh, he now lives on the East Coast. He's got his doctorate. Um, but wow. he is one of those guys that was constantly seeking furthering his education. And he oh. was always calm. Yeah. Right? No matter the situation, wow. he maintained this level of calm that you just looked at and admired. Yes. And it had an influence on me because it didn't matter if he had somebody in his office that mm -hmm. they truly messed up. Right? Yeah. Or if it was 
um, a simple conversation that he was having to have for an entire group. Mm -hmm. The conversation was always calm. It was never abrasive. It was never in your face. Yeah. He never yelled. Wow. And that had more of an impact on the people he was talking to by instead of yelling at them, Mm -hmm. just sitting down and explaining, one, this is disappointing. Mm -hmm. And these are the reasons why it's disappointing. Yeah. And then he would give a path to success. Oh. This is our plan, right? Yeah. We we didn't succeed in this area, and this is why we didn't succeed. Yeah. Let's come together and figure out a plan Yeah. to be able to come back and make it better. I love it. What a good leader. And, you know, I noticed you said we, and that, you know, it wasn't mm-hmm. you, you, you. It was we. Let's figure Correct. out a plan. So Let's, yeah, move forward. I'm going to kind of pair off of that a little bit. Mm-hmm. We talk about we. Right. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest things in uh, my opinion for leadership mm-hmm. is um, is ownership. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give credit to a book, Extreme mm-hmm. Ownership. Oh, I love, I love books. I love reading. Um, it's by uh, uh, I'm probably going to butcher their names. Uh, Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. OK. Uh, both Navy SEALs. Very highly intelligent men. Um, but they they teach the idea of extreme ownership, right? Mm-hmm. What did I not do? Mm-hmm. Or what did I do wrong? Yeah. Or what did I not give mm-hmm. that caused this to be a failure, mm-hmm. right? What caused this to be a failure, right? So we take ownership for the things that are not a success Mm -hmm. we find the issue so if you have a a personnel issue yeah what am i doing wrong that is not getting the message across to this person how Mm -hmm. can i help guide them in the direction that needs to be done Mm -hmm. and how do i do that through partnership with them Mm -hmm. on the flip side of that is when there is success that's their success that's not your success right it succeeded because of your team, yes. not because of you. Mm-hmm. So um, ownership is huge, Yes, right? Providing that sense of ownership to someone who you're trying to work through a problem with, mm-hmm. that will give them some sort of um, ownership yeah. of the overall thing. And it will cause them to be invested in the solution. Exactly. And then being invested and having motivation, all those things Mm -hmm. together. Right. Because who wants to solve a problem when the answer is given to you versus being part of the solution yourself? Exactly. Awesome. This is just great. Um, Let's see. Did you feel like you got a a good chance to finish that yeah i think so i absolutely okay. did okay number seven what is your earliest memory oh that's a that's a good one so okay like i said we didn't uh we didn't grow up with much money but mm-hmm. my dad and uh my uncle were mm-hmm. always working on vehicles and my dad ah. had a uh oh man i want to say it was a 1968 uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. It oh my was gosh! The Canadian pickup edition. Oh, that's cool. My dad had it lifted, and oh. there were big tires on yes. it. There was a Chevy 350 engine in it. <laughs> okay. it had a Muncie three speed in it. Sweet. Like I can, I can go through. And I was probably four or five years old. Yeah. And we were always working on it. But I remember uh, very distinctly uh, going down into this mud hole with my dad and my uncle, and they turned the ig- engine off. Okay. And we're in the middle of this. I mean, it's it's up to mid, maybe three quarters of the way up. Okay, the rim. so the truck is the truck is down in, in this the mud, giant mud hole. Okay, yep. and you're inside the truck. And uh, <laughs> my dad shuts the engine off, and they're sitting there talking back and forth. Oh my word! And uh, they decide it's time to leave. So my uncle what? climbs out one side, locks the hubs in. My dad climbs out the other, <laughs> locks the hubs in. And I remember my dad sidestepping the clutch on that and just watching this <gasps> rooster tail of oh, mud fly up into the air gosh. behind the truck. And it <laughs> probably had to have been 30 or 40 feet. But it's it's the memory of time with family. 
oh, it's so perfect. It's your earliest memory, but yet it's so, <laughs> it's just so cinematic the way you're describing right. it. And that's, and that's the way I see um, a lot of memories in my head. Yeah. I grew up hunting. I grew yeah. up fishing yeah. and doing all, all of these, these things. Yeah. Um, and my children will um, often ask for things, as yeah. kids do. Yeah. Right? They ask for things. Yeah. But um, Sari and I were big proponents of experiences. Oh, I love it. Because you're not going to remember mm-hmm. the, yeah. um, this or that. the toy mm-hmm. that your parents bought you when yeah. you were seven or eight years but old. But you're going to remember that mud. But you know what you're going to remember? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to remember the trip. Yep. You're going to remember the, the experience. Yep. And how mm-hmm. that made you feel. Exactly. I remember being giddy and yeah. giggling I as bet. I'm watching the, flood my, or the mud fly into the air. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. That's a great story. I love it. Okay, well, we're going to wrap it up here with a couple questions that all the guests share. And this one is, what book or film would you rec- like to recommend and why? Mm, so books. Uh, I would say, again, I'm, I'm a huge huge proponent on the leadership books if you have not read extreme ownership okay go get a copy we need to get one for the library for sure it's it's phenomenal okay um the other if we don't have it right (laughs) right it may be here i know people just have never seen it people don't get naturally pulled that direction sometimes i mean myself i wasn't big on those style books yeah um probably until after I got in the Marine Corps. There you go. And then they started pulling me that direction. Yeah. Like, what can I do to better myself? Wow. Um, And then uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Okay, Um, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Okay, another one. if people don't uh, know who he is, Mm -hmm. um, he is a motivational speaker. Okay. He kind of teaches people not only on the leadership side of the house but the mm-hmm. corporate leadership side of the house gotcha like this is what people want yes right and if you haven't you can go online he has um he has short ted talks oh good that, okay that people could get an idea a small portion of this yeah. start with why okay and it goes over the idea and the concept of if you start with why mm-hmm. people will become invested Mm-hmm. Because think of anything that is done in life. What do people want to know? Why are we doing it? Right. If I tell you mm-hmm. the library is going to be closed on Thursday, yeah. what why? are you going to ask? Yeah, why? Everybody wants to know the right. why. So when you, are, when you are doing things as a leader, yeah. when you are making changes, when you are introducing new concepts, mm-hmm. you start with the why. You, you say, this is why we're doing this. I love it. And he kind of goes over how some companies succeeded Mm -hmm. in that exact model. They started with the why and how some companies really struggled and weren't able to be successful because they said, look at this fantastic product we have. Yeah. And that's all they said. Yeah. Instead of telling you why you could use it or need it. I want to be able to provide this to you because it does all of these fabulous things. Yeah totally makes sense so uh movies man uh i am a nerd when it comes to movies and honestly if we go back to books Mm -hmm. uh lord of the rings lord of the rings and our whole family and the original hobbit oh yes i have read them in high school uh i have some of the uh third edition prints love it and a little bit older very cool horrific condition (laughs) that's okay but uh i i would say lord of the rings yes i would say harry potter's it's it's just so entertaining yeah um i haven't seen a lot of movies recently that's okay people are into um things that have happened right Mm -hmm. based on true story Mm -hmm. go watch american sniper Mm. it is going to break your heart oh those it is going to absolutely break your heart gotcha watch saving private ryan yeah i you want to go back further watch schindler's list oh i can't i watched that as a kid i can't do it and it absolutely breaks my heart but i've read books opens your eyes to right and i can do that but i can't watch schindler's list 
So which is understandable it's, it's okay. because it's yeah. so heart wrenching. It's just too. Yeah. It really is. It, there's yeah. there's so much emotion that's mm-hmm. in that. Yeah. Um, and I think if people pause and and take the time to mm-hmm. understand that, um, that that's what the world was like. Right. And not necessarily the whole world. Right. But that's what a part, part of, of the it. world was like. Yes. It will help us from repeating history. Exactly. It's so important. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, for your last question, David, here it is. Are there any questions that you wish I'd asked and anything else you would like us to know? You know, I don't think there are necessarily any questions um, that I wish you had asked. I think it's important for people to understand, um, and I know that the, the whole idea behind these conversations is so that people get to know um, – Who's behind the scenes in exactly. the community? Who's, who's putting in the work to ensure that we have beautiful parks? Yes. To ensure that we have a safe community. Mm-hmm. To ensure that the city runs effectively and efficiently. And I think that's huge. I do too. Because people don't often have the time or take the time to be able to have those conversations one-on-one with us. So to be able to put on podcast yes. for example mm-hmm. and listen listen to it while you're on your way to work or right. while you're doing chores around the house or something yeah. like that is huge it allows the community to connect in a way that is often not immediately available and it also allows them to understand that they can approach us all the same um, I want children for example to know that the safe place to run is police officers yes. the safe place to run is firefighters um, and the library. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's Talk safe. to us. It's a safe zone. We're here zone, for you. Exactly. Right? And oftentimes we will have, um, and it's unfortunate, uh, we'll have people who will say, oh, you better do this. Otherwise, I'm going to have that police officer r- arrest you. Yeah. And it breaks my heart because they're, yeah. they're being children. Mm-hmm. You have to find another way to connect because otherwise – you're going to cause them to be afraid of the police. Exactly. And, I mean, I grew up in a time, you grew up in a time mm-hmm. to where we loved the police. Mm-hmm. We, we showed them respect. Exactly. We respect would run is to a word. Them I'd mm-hmm. be like, can I have a sticker? I've always yeah. wanted to be a police officer. Those were our reactions to police officers instead of the questioning mm-hmm. and the fear that comes into place by people placing fear in their children's hearts. Right. We don't want that. I just want them to hear who you are and what you do and what you stand for. And, uh, well, I guess that would just lead me to say thank you for all that you do. And thank you for helping take care of the library, too, because we appreciate so much how you guys walk through and check on us and check on things. And you just stop and chat. And I think that's where I really learned that it is okay. Mm -hmm to really just say how are you doing and yeah have you seen this happening or you know anything like that it's but it's all about communicating to each other you know one-on-one and and in bigger groups too but anyway it's so important everything that you're doing and uh gosh i just thank you so much for being here and sharing your story and what a great story it is i appreciate it Debbie. yeah it's uh pleasure to be on and to talk to you about this and um i think you hit the nail on the head right communication yeah um you say thank you i say i appreciate that but i just talk to people yeah that's all i do and you're a good listener i appreciate that thank you all right have a great afternoon and thank you again we'll see you out there in the community yeah absolutely see okay you. thank you at the part of the podcast where I'm going to read a quote from a patron. I've provided a little card, and at the top it says, My favorite thing about Puyallup Public Library is... And this was signed by someone named Kathy. And Kathy wrote, I love all the new books 
the collections, which include nonfiction and fiction. Of course, my favorite is cookbooks. Yay! Thank you, Kathy. We have an amazing collection of cookbooks. There's about two aisles worth there upstairs in the nonfiction in the 640s. And come on down and look at our cookbook collection because we have a great one. And we're always getting new ones. In fact, I even put in a purchase request recently for a wonderful, I believe it's called Asada uh cookbook from some uh, woman in California where she talks about friends and family getting together and having a great cookout Uh, and the recipes that come from her family and everyone shares and oh it just it was a, it's a wonderful cookbook. Anyway, so thank you, Kathy. We uh, love hearing from you, and uh, thank you for being a library patron and taking the time to write a little comment card. So thank you for joining Shush with Debbie, and please tune in for our next episode. Thank you.